didn't he? The opposite of covetousness. What did the, what did the rich young ruler say? Well, what do I lack? What do I lack? What did Jesus say? Sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and follow me. Why did Jesus say something? Why didn't he just say, just give up 50%? I mean, give up 100%. Give up everything that you have. Give it to the poor and come follow me. Why did he say that? Because he knew what was in his heart. Because Jesus knew exactly what was in his heart. This to him, this, this, all these riches were a cancer. You follow me? They were the only thing that was holding him back. Jesus realized that he had to exhaust himself of all of it. Because cancer, you can't just cut a little piece of cancer out. Okay? A little piece of cancer and you walk away and you think everything's going to be hunky-dory. Well, that, that lights up like a fire, doesn't it? Like an inferno. It has to be all cut out. And Jesus knew this. And let me tell you something. Ooh, almost went off. <laughs> I, was, I love that when your stomach does that. <laughs> anyway, so this guy, he left, changed forever. Never again would he ever be the same. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he was a changed man and not for the better. I bet you that hounded him the rest of his living days. You, you remember Nabal? Am I, saying name, yes, am I saying his name correctly? The rich guy that owned Nabal. all... Nabal. Nabal. Yeah. He died probably the way this guy fell did in the end. It's terrible. Terrible. He was a typical Laodicean. Law-abiding, commandment keeper. It's scary, isn't it? It's scary. It was all external. All external. One sin cherished, one sin cherished will annul all the power of the gospel. One sin, brothers and sisters. One sin cherished. You'll throw it all away. Jesus knew that that was fire. <coughs> You can't play with fire without getting burned. Amen. The white raiment. Let's go to Romans real quickly. 10 1. solution for their nakedness. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For, is, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Does that confuse you? I hope that. Well, that, that end of phrase, it says, for Christ is the goal of the law. Absolutely. You said it, brother. Thank you. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 3, 21. You know, a lot of people want to get rid of it some of these early parts of the Bible. I, you can't get rid of anything. If you get rid of, especially the beginning part of the Genesis, if you, if you throw this away, the whole Bible falls apart. Okay, Genesis 3.21. Unto Adam and to, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. How do you, how do you reckon that God did this? How do you, how do you make them clothes of skin? Adam had to take the life of a lamb, didn't he? Can you imagine what that must have been like for Adam? 
to take the life of that lamb? Because the lambs probably weren't so little back then, I don't imagine. I don't know. I mean, the animal was huge. I mean, the animals were probably, were all kind of morphed today. Or like little dwarfs. But can you imagine what that must have been like for him to take the life of that lamb? And Jesus saying to him, you know, one day, down the road, I'm going to have to come. And this is going to have to happen. This is what sin does. This is what this is what you get with sin, death. That must have been something. And he made these coats. No, no, no fig leaves anymore. He made them coats of skin, didn't he? God gave them to him. Let's turn to Galatians. Back to Galatians. children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You hear that? Put on Christ. What do you think? We're clothed. We're clothed, right. We're clothed with the righteousness of God. That's, you know, Adam and Eve, they were covered with this fig leaf that they put on. But they said they were naked, didn't they? Well, we, we were ashamed because we were naked. Well, how, well, they weren't naked, were they? Technically, they weren't naked. But they lost the light, didn't they? The covering of God. The shield. Garments are used in Scripture in two senses. senses. Do you want to say something? That's the only way our faith works. Without that road, it don't work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Garments are used in Scripture in two senses. Justification, His righteousness, and sanctification. Character that becomes mine. You follow what I'm saying? It, 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 Jesus, it, it has to be alive. It can't be just intellectually. It has to be in the heart and in the heart of hearts. You get me there? Let's turn to uh, Revelation 19. We'll wrap this up here. Revelation 9, what? 19. Revelation 19, 7. <laughs> Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in what? Amen. Clean and white, for the fine linen is what? The righteous acts of the saints. The righteous acts of the saints. Praise God. Praise God. Let us turn real quickly to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. What's going on here in Hebrews 11? You know? All faith. It says in 11.1, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, I like to say not yet seen, but it says not seen. So, if we, we look through here, we can see, well, there's different things here. Let's start in... Uh, Eleven seven. By faith Noah was being warned of God of things not as seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. What does that mean? He was moved with fear. What did he do? Huh. Isn't this the view of faithful example of the ancient worthies? Isn't this? Well, what's happening here? Do you hear things going on? Do you hear? Did you hear? Somebody, Noah, building an ark? How does he do that? He gets hammers and nails and saws, right? He starts to go to work, doesn't he? By faith, Abraham, when he was called out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out. He had to do something, didn't he? 
He had to move. Didn't he? Hey, Sarah, pack up the stuff. We've got to go. And then the promised child. Hello? How old were they? You think you got to do something to have a promised child? That don't just happen. <laughs> I mean, she probably said, where are we going? He probably said, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. I mean, you can go through that whole chapter and find things that the people are doing. They're doing stuff, man. They're doing stuff. Matthew 15. I, I am really wrapping it up. I heard that. I know where you live, girl. Matthew 15, 14. What's that say? Let them alone. They be blind leaders of blind, of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Right? Matthew 23. Verse 16. Woe unto you, blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools that are blind, for what, are, what weather is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And I'm skipping down to 19. Ye fools and blind, for weather is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Skip into 24. Ye bind guides would strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You understand that? You, you know what they mean by that? Mm -hmm. You know, they used to take their drink and, and strain it so that they wouldn't defile themselves with a gnat that they might accidentally drink. Huh. Interesting, huh? 26. Thou blind Pharisee, Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, then the outside of them may be clean also. When you're washing a cup, what do you do first? You get down inside there, don't you? Because that's where you got to worry about it. Hmm. The outside is more showy, isn't it? More showy, for sure. You see, brothers and sisters, <coughs> As Laodiceans, we can't major in the minors and minor in the majors. We gotta get it right. Jesus has to be first and foremost. Mm -hmm. When you when you study, we talked about this a little bit in Sabbath school class today. Basketball players, I just use a sports vernacular, they study the mechanics of the fundamentals, right? Shooting the free throws. Right? Shooting the free throws. They keep on target. Jesus is that. You follow me? Stay on target. And then, when you're away from that, you're always thinking. You sit down. You have fellowship with the Lord. Then you discuss strategy. You get into your Bible more and more. But you never leave. You never leave the fundamentals. What are the fundamentals, brothers and sisters? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. <coughs> Amen. Paul said, that's it. That's all I need to know. Paul was filled up with the law, wasn't he? He said, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. For the law, blameless. What was his end time rhythm and tone? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Listen, let these other things fall where they will. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to lead His people across the finish line. And we, brothers and sisters, are those people. We really are. Let us have our closing song, 
whiter than snow. If you want to know the Lord Jesus and not just have these pretty little ornaments dangling on us, but you want to have real life Jesus Christ in your heart, I pray you just raise your hand and say, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this time that you've given us, that we could be this last generation, that we are called by you, that we are hollowed out in such a way. We want to be not just broken cisterns that can't even hold water, but we want to be of you, beautiful earthen vessels covered and wrapped in your righteousness to do thy will. We pray this day that you would give us new feelings, new thoughts, and new motives that will drive us on over the finish line and help us to see our brother in need, that we may lift him up and call him out of the fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a little, just hang on a second here. John's going to come up and take care of something here. <laughs> I'd like to uh, ask Carl to come up. We have a gift that we'd like to give Carl. Um, I'd also like to have prayer with you as well. So I'd like to, on behalf of the church, give this to you. Uh, as you know, Carl was baptized. Um, and it's always a beautiful thing when we get to share in the conversion and the baptism of a fellow believer. Amen. Carl, what I'd like to do is ask Ray to have a special prayer over you. Ray, can you do that? Sure. Are you mind you? No? Carl, you mind you? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for this brother, this gentleman. I ask that you bless Carl in a mighty way. I know that he, I see the Spirit moving in him. I, I just love the fact that he's chosen to come here and be with us. And I'm just thankful that you have got a hold of this man. Amen. And I pray that you continue to direct him and to guide him. And I pray that he would be willing to be made willing. I see some great work for this man ahead. And I pray that he, even if he's chosen to go somewhere else and do that work, I pray that you, you just do a mighty work in him, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's my turn. <laughs> Heavenly Father, again, as we have got to see Carl come into this church and give his heart to you to learn the beautiful truths that are contained in your word. Father, you have seen Carl make decisions for you. He has shown publicly through baptism his allegiance to your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I just thank you for the privilege of being a part of of Carl's journey. I thank you for bringing him here to the New Smyrna Beach Church. And as Ray prayed, I pray also that you will continue to use Carl. I pray that you use him here, but whatever your will is for him. But I pray that you will continue to use him as a teacher, as a leader, that you will bless the ministry that you will give him. Continue to help Carl grow day by day in the sanctification and the justification that is given through your son, Jesus Christ. And may he be a powerful witness for you. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. These will be on the back if anybody wants some of these.